get started. Cool, dope. All right, welcome everybody. Um, first time on the stage channel, so forgive us if there's some hiccups, but uh, it should hopefully sort the for suits the format a little bit better. Um, so it's a bit a bit smoother for people to ask questions. Uh, welcome. We've got quite a lot of people here today. This is awesome. It's really exciting. Quite a few people I've seen before. Many people I haven't, which is really, really cool. Things are still growing fast. So I think to kick it off, I think the best thing is if we do the PO app first. So Will, if you want to explain what a PO app is and then how people can uh, claim that, that would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So um, let me know if you cannot hear well, but otherwise I'll hop right into it. Um, so yeah, so um, we've done PO apps for some of the town halls we've, we've previously had, but uh, PO app stands for Proof of Attendance Protocol. It's um, one, of, one of these Web3 protocols that's been just really well adopted by the space. Um, it lets people who um, attend, you know, events, virtual events, et cetera, et cetera, get an, an NFT that signifies that attendance. And so um, today for the first time, we are going um, to be using an integration with a bot called Degen Bot. Um, this is a bot that was actually built by another DAO, the Bankless DAO. Um, uh, Zero or Zero, he's actually in the crowd here. I can I can see him down there. He's helped us get this going. He works with Bankless and um, has been just massively helpful in um, getting this set up. So what it's actually doing is <laughs> hopefully I've configured it correctly and it's watching everybody who's in the audience here um, and recording those people. Um, and then at the end of this meeting, once we end this, we're, it's going to just auto DM out uh, the POAP claim links. So um, if you don't have your DMs on, you might want to turn them on in Discord just um, you know, for about you know, 30 minutes after this call in so you can get your POAP link. It will send you a DM. Um, DGEN is the bot, and then you'll be able to click that link and claim your POAP today. So pretty awesome stuff. An another positive of that is we'll, we'll be able to use this for um, our different different groups, especially as we get going in season zero. So I was able to listen to the website meeting yesterday for a few minutes, like they'll be able to use the bot as well, et cetera, et cetera. So pretty neat um, testing it out today. Yeah, awesome yeah, effort getting that set up. Yeah. Maybe we could write a, um, a quick how-to guide for the teams so they know how to use it. Yep, yep, absolutely. And Bankless DAO has provided some good documentation. They're actually updating. Like I said, um, Zero, you see them in, in the crowd here. Um, uh, feel free to DM him if you're anybody who has questions about that or how it's going to work. And then we'll send out some of the documentation as well. Dope. Awesome. Yeah, well done, man. Looking excited to get that one. They've all looked really, really good so far. Thanks to Eric for designing as well. Um, these are a nice thing to be able to get as a community member so you can kind of track your history in the DAO and they're given out as Will said in lots of different places and lots of different events so if you're ever doing anything in the web free space going to any events or calls like this like always watch out for POAPs and it's a kind of a nice like record of your history in the space that you can have um, so yeah that's awesome so um, I think we'll probably uh, just look at the stats for the week so uh, in terms of our Genesis NFT we are now at about just over 5,000 minted, which is sick. Well, it means we just broke that in the last probably day or so. So that's really, really exciting. Uh, I think that's what, is it 2,500 left, Nader? What's the total mint? I can't yes, uh, so the total mint is actually 8,000, but I think we cut off the public mint at like 7,700 or something like that. So there's like a couple of hundred that we have on reserve, and those are going to be... Uh, saved for once we sell out and we want to bring in uh, community members or maybe do giveaways and stuff like that. Okay, cool. But that's crazy. That's what, is it two months now? And we're at 5,000 NFTs. Yeah, and I'm actually really happy with the, the number of unique holders. Like, I, I'm not too crazy about uh, the people that have minted like 70 or 60 of those. I would hope for people to mint between like one and five and hopefully with those extra ones, you're kind of like giving them away. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm really happy with the the average number per person is, is kind of around like less than less than two which is great i think and um we're kind of starting to see 
the the activity pick up a lot in the last week or so. So I'm assuming that this will continue to increase, especially after today's town hall, after the news that we're going to talk about later. Yeah. Woo-woo. The uh, individual holders is at 3,000 as well. So we must have just broke through that barrier. So that's two awesome milestones for the week. Um, it's crazy to see kind of how much has grown in such a short time. Uh, but super exciting and just the start of hopefully uh, lots of awesome stuff to come. Um, not all of those pe- not all of those purchases often uh, equate directly to people that have actually come and joined the server. So if I just check the number that we have there, we're now over 2,000 for that as well. 2,078 people who have purchased a Genesis NFT have also authenticated into the server. So I know I've seen it. Yeah. It's been pretty nuts over the last couple of weeks as more and more people have come in. But that's a really cool milestone as well. Another good thing to note that I think it's it's extremely extremely good to to kind of just point out that is the activity uh, the actual um, percentage of people that are participating in the governance. So I think I saw a percentage from DAOs that it's like around one to two percent of uh, participants take um, action in different governance decisions. So for instance, we had our snapshot vote. Well, we had over I don't know how many we ended up, but I, I know we had over five hundred people participate. Um, and out of around 3,000 or so, at the time it was even less than that, uh, unique members, that was something like 20% participation, which is at least uh, 10 to maybe even uh, 20x the average for most DAOs. So that was really cool to see. And um, I just want to point that out and just uh, let, everyone, uh, let everyone know that I appreciate you like taking part in uh, the governance stuff. And if you see stuff happening in the future, um, the more participation and the more the more decentralized everything is. So we appreciate when people uh, do participate in those dis- decisions. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the more engagement we can get, the more decentralized it comes, the better it's all going to be for everyone. So yeah, it's really, really awesome to see. Um, and then from a, a Twitter perspective, Nader, I think we crossed the like 9,000 follower barrier mark. And I think you shared a, a, a screenshot um, maybe earlier in the week where we were up to like, I think like multiple millions of impressions. Like I can't remember exactly where we got to. Yeah, we're we're at like a 1.1 million impressions uh, per 30 day period. We're hitting around 5,000 followers a month. And again, I think a good way to gauge our growth is first uh, other DAOs that are out there. And again, I think we're growing just so much faster than almost any other DAO that I've seen, even some of the really, really successful ones. So that's really promising. Obviously people are interested in the, the content that we're sharing. And I think that, the, uh, one of the things that I'm wanting to take into consideration um, as far as our culture and things go in the future is that a lot of DAOs are token gated and they don't really allow a lot of the stuff that they're doing to be put out into the world. Where I think the strength that we have is that we're creating a lot of really great stuff and we're helping a lot of people that aren't in our DAO. So like, I think that we do have the token gated access for the members of the DAO, but a lot of the things and the events that we're doing are going to be completely public, completely public goods. We want everyone to, to be able to be helped from the, the work that we're doing. But um, so like, yeah, we want to keep that as kind of like something to, to consider that we're doing all this great stuff. We don't want to token gate um, hardly anything really other than maybe some of the, the conversations and, and the community that we have. But all of the things that we're creating, if we can think of ways to, to get those out to as many people as possible, help as many people as possible, that just seems to be a, a good strategy and, and it just helps everyone. Yeah, definitely. Um, I really like that. The more open we can be, the better. Um, one of the things we'll push out today is kind of one of our first public goods as well. It's a small but I think important step uh, and it's going to be exciting to see those um, come out more over the next however long into the future um, we can grow develop a DAO. Um, I just wanted to say one last thank you to a chap called Josh Stein. I don't know if he's in the audience. Uh, my computer doesn't seem to want to let me scroll. But Josh took notes. Yeah, there he is. He took notes on the town hall last week and I didn't acknowledge him for it. So really, really appreciate it. Um, I will be taking notes, but if anyone wants to scribe and take notes in the background and then submit a, t- a PR to the community repo, like please feel free. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to Josh for doing that last week. Uh, it was really, really helpful. So uh, today we're going to run through uh, kind of like project updates of what's happening around some of the things that are being built in the DAO. Uh, just a kind of a, a hat nod to some uh, IRL and live event stuff uh, that's been going on as well. 
We're then going to talk about the Season Zero proposal that went up. So if you don't know what that is, don't worry. Um, we will explain it a little bit later and then also a bit more detail around the Gitcoin partnership. Uh, and I forgot at the start of this call, uh, I was uh, called out by Joff last week, very rightly. For anyone that's new to the DAO, these calls are basically a chance for us all to get together and share what's happened in the, in, in the week across the community. It can be quite hard to kind of pick things up um, as they're happening. There's sort of quite a lot of channels. There's lots of different places where things can be going on. So we kind of use this call uh, certainly each week at the moment as we're starting out to kind of bring everyone together to, to, to try and give an overview of what's going on. So if you're not catching things during the week, then this is the place to come and catch them. Uh, and then we'll always have a space for, for questions as well. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd give people an overview of that for anyone that's new, because I know we've had a lot of growth over the last week. So um, we might as well roll quickly into project updates. So uh, with Hart, you're already up here. Are you okay to give us a quick update on the website? Absolutely. Very brief update here. Uh, yesterday we had our weekly website project meeting. Um, you can see the notes in a PR here. I put that in the developer's voice text channel. Uh, big items that we have going on in the last week are work being done on redesigning our landing page. Uh, I linked to the PR there if you'd like to see it. Uh, this is being built by Nazi21, who has been quite active on the site project so far. Uh, this is pretty exciting because it really revamps our landing page to look uh, much more professional um, and uh, modern, very Web3, I think. So very excited about that. Uh, other than that, there's just been little bits of design work going on, and we also have a few members of the website team uh, or people who have been involved in the website have started the tooling channel, uh, which you can see here, and working on building tooling for local testnet uh, testing. Uh, the, the, the tooling really isn't there. There's not a whole lot. So I think they're investigating building uh, tooling for the Web3 community as a whole uh, and our projects in particular. So Pretty exciting things there. If you're interested in that type of thing, please join in the conversation over there. I think that's about all we have for the website for the last week. Awesome. Dope. Yeah, it's looking really good, that landing page. Cracking work from everyone in that team. Looking forward to see it go out. Um, next up, we've got the derivatives. So for those who don't know, the deriv we're creating a derivative versions of um, are the Genesis NFT that you've all minted to get into the community that uses the traits within that NFT um, to create derivative versions of it. So our first one is called Pixel Avatars. Most of you would have seen that. So I think Zulu's got his hand up. If we can get him on the stage and give us an update of kind of where things are at. Uh, invite to speak. Zulu, did you get the message? Is he up? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, awesome, awesome. Uh, it is, uh, <laughs> I, I think, quite a lot of activity uh, basically the last week, uh, most, mostly along the lines of the uh, smart contract. Oh, sorry, for, for those, oh, uh, actually, I think uh, Kemp's already mentioned what the derivatives is, so that's fine. So uh, last week, uh, there's a lot of work, uh, particularly with uh, either Insight and a uh, couple with help with uh, Carlo Miguel. And we, we got a few really uh, nice fella out there who was helping uh, with the uh, debugging of the testing on how to do the automated testing and stuff like that. Uh, and I think uh, even people like uh, Eve Joffel was uh, helping out. So I think it's, it's a very good uh, kind of warm kind of fuzzy feeling with, with the uh, a lot of people pitching in to help and that, that's very great and very encouraging for the team. Um, and uh, we uh, basically, I think the smart contract is pretty much done. 
So it's now in my uh, I I take over. Uh, uh, if you guys do not know the famous uh, Rushmore Nelson, the one who did most of the uh, front end work uh, with the generation. Uh, sorry, not generation, but the the actual displaying of the pixel avatars and the the front end UI. So uh, that is basically missing the the wallet connection and the actual linking up to the back end smart contract. So now I've uh, sort of uh, <laughs> I put out my hands to sort of uh, wrap things up there. Uh, to use my uh, sort of a little bit knowledge of what I have with uh, uh, with the front end Web three stuff, uh, and uh, I'm going to sort of uh, try to pull it over the line in uh, maybe the next few days or so. But I think the the good thing about it is that I'm I'm happy to see a lot more people uh, stepping up and 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 helping. Oh, forgot also to mention Daiwat, who's been a good glue uh, with uh, with everything. Uh, you know, whenever I'm not around or or you know, people need to some push requests done or whatever, um, he she uh, he he has been very good in in put uh, pulling things along and and putting it into the repo. So, but yeah, I, I think it's, it's, it's a good thing. Uh, we are a little bit slower than what we expected, but I think overall the, the end product will be a bit more testing. And along the way, I think a lot of people learn a lot of things. And I think that's what's important here is so that uh, people learn about new things, about solidity and, and how to do testing and stuff like that. And they, they, they have fun doing it. So they don't think it's like a work or chore or anything like that. So yeah, again, if anybody wants to help, just join the directory channels and, uh, Look us up and then see what what we can do to help. And sorry if I don't mention some of you guys. There's there's a lot more people out there who who did help bits and pieces here and there, but yeah, uh, every single help that we get in it uh, counts, and everybody will learn together. Hopefully, thanks, Kemster. Thank you so much. Amazing uh, to see all this stuff. We you know it's really appreciated, and everyone else that that's helping you out as well. Thank you so much. Thanks. Sir. Yeah, awesome work, guys. It's going to be cool to get that deployed. Hopefully we can do it in the next uh, week or so. Um, we need to get a, a SIG deployed for the DAO, uh, which we'll hope to do in the next few days. Uh, and then we can, I guess, do some final tests and get it out. But you guys have smashed it. That's, it looks great. Like You've done great work. Like Thanks so much for everything that's gone into that project. It's, it's awesome. Um, so the next project that uh, we're working on at the moment uh, is a wiki for the DAO. So I don't know if Nathan is here, if he wants to give a kind of a brief overview of where things are at. My computer's being a bit crazy and not letting me scroll. Uh, is he here? Yep. Hey, guys. <laughs> Cheers, man. You saved me. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, hey guys, my name is Nathan, uh, and welcome to a lot of the new people who, you know, it seems like it's your first town hall, so really glad you can join it. Um, obviously, over the last few town halls, we've been getting a ton of questions about, you know, how to participate and, uh, like, what is this DAO uh, and what are all the projects going on? Um, and so one of the main initiatives uh, that I'm helping out with is uh, building the uh, DAO wiki, which uh, I'm just posting on here on the developer's voice text chat. Um, so we're hoping that this wiki will be sort of an, uh, a good um, first page for people to come in. Um, also really important is the onboarding docs, which is uh, listed in that uh, wiki, which I'll also paste a uh, link to. And so this, for, for anyone who's new and you haven't been involved or you don't really know how to uh, get involved or, you know, you're just confused about all the tools and everything that we use, um, we hope this onboarding doc is a really great place for you to start. It talks about, you know, how to, what Discord is used for, what discourse uh, the forum is used for, uh, how to get, uh, you know, involved in projects and see what's going on. Um, so definitely uh, check that out. And also, if you want to participate and uh, help with this wiki, we have our own uh, DAO wiki channel, um, which, you know, you can come in, uh, you know, just throw in feedback or throw in new ideas. Uh, we want to get, you know, people contributing to this wiki as much as possible. Uh, but hopefully this wiki will be a good place uh, to uh, as a reference for all of the activity that's happening. happening. Uh, some people asked about, you know, what projects are happening as well. So there is like an initial list of projects, but it's not 
uh, that uh, you know full fully built yet, and we want to have a better visualization tool in there as well. Um, so we're going to be smashing our brains together over the next uh, couple of weeks to try and uh, really get a good view of this and uh, really evolve this wiki for a singular place for people to visit. Uh, also, the last thing that's on there is a link to the resource space, which I think uh, Kemp or someone else will be talking through as well. Um, and so there's a, uh, a page in there that says that's called using the resource space, and it's a really good introduction on how to use that. So, but I'm sort of segueing into the resource space. Uh, but for now, yeah, that's basically the wiki. Yeah, massive shout to Nathan for getting that rolling. It's uh, something we very much needed. Um, and hopefully it's going to be really, really helpful for everyone. So thanks for pushing along with that, Nathan. My pleasure. Yeah, so Nathan alluded to the next project that we've got, which is um, it's called the resource base. So Nathan, if you don't mind sharing the contribution, a link to the contributions from the Notion into the developer voice text, and then maybe if we can get one of the views of the uh, table in there as well. What we had found is... Um, Generally within Web3, newcomers often find it hard to identify good learning resources. I'm sure Nader would attest to this. Everyone pretty much that comes in would attest to this. Um, but it's quite sparsely uh, across the internet and it's not always easy to find what, where these resources are, what's good, what's bad, like what level they're, they're uh, what's suitable for your level. So what we decided to do was create a way to capture all of the really valuable learning resources that are being shared in our community and capture it in a way where we can organize it. Um, so I will share. Yeah, so Nathan's just shared the resource base link. So if you click on that, it should take you to a, a view of this resource base. So the idea is that as a community, we all add learning resources to this um, to this database and then we categorize it in ways where it becomes useful for people to be able to filter through. So kind of like the level of um, difficulty or the level that you're at in terms of learning at the moment, like beginner, intermediate, advanced, what blockchain you're interested in, maybe what frameworks and tools you're interested in or, or what kind of um, format for learning you like, like articles or videos or courses or books. Uh, and what we want is for this to become a uh, Certainly to begin with, an exhaustive resource of uh, high quality content. And then over time, once we've built this up, we'll probably retrospectively think about how we can better curate this resource and then how we can potentially build things on top of it. So we might build like a learn web free website or something like that. Um, not totally clear, um, but we need to gather the resources first and figure out how to organize them in, in an effective way. Um, so if you've got interesting resources, um, Nathan shared a link here that says using resource base. So if you go to that, there is a guide for how you can add to this database. And it's basically just through a series of forms. Um, we will be tracking contributions to the resource base because at some point in the future, it's likely that we will seek to reward people that contribute um, to this project as well as everything else within the DAO. Um, so yeah, if you've got good resources or you find something or you see something shared, um, try and remind people and nudge them towards this. And hopefully we can start building out a really big collection of learning resources that makes it easier for everyone that comes after us in the DAO and also outside the DAO to kind of get their feet wet and um, start uh, learning and getting deeper into, into Web3. So that's, that's quite exciting. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see how it grows over the next uh, week and into the future. If you have any feedback, um, we have a resource-based channel which I'll pop into the developer voice text now, if I can spell. There we go. Um, and then we've got a couple of side projects on for this at the moment. So one of them is a, is a Discord bot to be able to add to this resource base. So Noah's up here. Do you want to give us a quick uh, update of where we're at with the Discord bot, Noah, as well? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, so the goal of the Discord bot is really to make uh, adding contributions to the database a lot easier and also in a way that we'll be able to spin off these site projects a little bit easier because we'll be able to validate all of the data in a nice, nicer way than just having these Airtable uh, forms, which is a really great way to that's getting us up off the ground and getting started. Uh, the Discord bot is going to enable us to add all of these resources from any of the channels here. 
So if you see a resource that you would like, you can just say, hey, slash add resource and then drop that link in and it'll drop it into the database so that everyone can take a look at it and we'll have kind of this general source of truth. Uh, the hope around this is that we'll be able to kind of standardize what all of these forms look like and the cleaner our data is, the easier it will be to spin off these projects that you're talking about, like perhaps like a, a Learn Web 3 website uh, will be uh, something that we can take all of that data and really just use this Airtable as a source of truth and have a bunch of spinoffs of different derivatives of this data and how we want to display it. Um, and so that's that's really the goal around this. Um, we're checking along currently. We've added a way to add contributors. Um, all of this is just on the like a test server that we're working on right now in a test uh, resource base as well. So none of this is like functional in the Discord currently. Um, and so we're working on getting that live as quickly as possible. Um, as far as the Discord bot goes, I would like to give a big thanks to both Aiden and Camila. I think that's that's her name. I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. But these two people um, have both put in PRs into the repo and have been helping talking in that Discord base. Um, I think this is a really great opportunity for anyone that's like unsure, like y'all haven't contributed to open source before. Um, but are kind of looking towards doing it. Um, this is like a pretty, I would say, uh, beginner-friendly uh, repository. It's all written in TypeScript, so you've got that nice type safety. And we're also working on this test database, so you know nothing's really high stakes currently. Um, and so if it's something that you are interested in, I would really encourage you to just ping me over in the Discord bot thread um, that is in the resource space. Let me see if I can go ahead and link toward the, uh, the Discord bot. Uh, you can ping us over there, and there's a bunch of great discussion going along the PRs and stuff that are over there. Um, and that's that's it, really. Awesome. Thanks, Noah. Yeah, yeah, it's moved along really, really fast. It's been impressive to see what, what you've all got done over the last, like, week or so. So, yeah, super good stuff. Um, shamefully, I forgot to uh, mention the people that have helped with the Airtable side of it as well. So someone that's been really, really helpful There's a few people... Uh, is Colin or Kogo in um, uh, in Discord, and then uh, Greg has also been very helpful um, throughout this process, and Nathan as well, who you spoke to, uh, or who spoke to you a few minutes ago, was really really helpful in getting this all set up as well. So yeah, we really appreciate the contributions. If people want to contribute more to it, uh, drop into the to the respective channels, um, and we will uh, help you get onboarded to the project. Um, there's one final element to this as well. Uh, I don't know if Greg is about, I know he was on his phone, so he may prefer someone else to speak. Uh, he is here. Greg, do you want to put your hand up if you want to talk about the Markdown repo and any help that's needed? Or if not, I guess Manny can or I can, I don't mind. Okay, no hand up. Okay, cool. I'll do it as well. So um, this idea for this resource base sort of came alongside um, a project that we had already live or a repo that we were already building on GitHub to organize resources. And I think quite a few people here may have already uh, seen this uh, resource, um, but I will paste it in in just a moment when I can get to the right channel. Yeah, here we go. So... This is, at the moment, is being managed by pull requests and issues in terms of adding resources to the um, to this repo. But Greg and Manny at the moment have been working on um, a GitHub action, which will hit the Airtable API and then auto-generate this resource repo. So where we want to get to is the Airtable is the source of truth for all of the resources that we're collecting and then Noah and Co are working on an easier way to add to that using the Discord bot and Greg and Manny have been working um, on the GitHub action which will allow us to auto build this repo and, and the idea behind doing it in this repo is it's the developer's natural habitat. People are very used to finding like awesome blah repos um, so we think it can be like another extension of a public good to be able to get loads of learning resources out right where developers hang out. Um, so once it's done, we'll probably be calling on everyone in the community to go and smash that like button at the same time, and we can get it tra trending on GitHub um, GitHub repos on the on their trending page, and then hopefully we can get lots of eyes on it, um, and uh, yeah, kind of make a bigger impact with all of the the resources that are being gathered around um, the DAO. So I was on a different screen, and I didn't realise that 
Manny and Greg had come up. So where are you up to with it, guys? Like, how's it going? Do you need any help? Or... Uh, we're just about there. So the only thing that's weird with it is that GitHub Action permissions vary by your repo. So uh, Manny has added a lot of tests, and it is, I guess, <laughs> it was functional. And so we just have to bring it back to having clean code and being functional at the same time. Uh, but I think that's mainly a me problem. So, yeah, it's about ready. And I will certainly announce it when it is. And that goes hand in fist with adding the resources to the site because it's all just a matter of using the Airtable APIs effectively. I concur. Greg just mentioned that basically I broke everything and he's going to fix everything. <laughs> but he broke it cleanly. Correct. You'd be going too slow if you weren't breaking it anyway, boys. It's, it's good. Um, cool. Yeah, no, thanks. That's moved along really quick as well. Um, and if this whole system works, like this resource could grow to something pretty big and hopefully pretty impactful quite quickly. So yeah, thanks to everyone that's helping out. It's been, it's been really, really good. Uh, and then the last thing we wanted to share from a project perspective is we're going to be spinning up a weekly retro newsletter uh, that will go out, I think we're thinking sort of Sunday, uh, each week with an update of what's happening around the DAO. Um, there is a channel for this. It is called Newsletters uh, in a not particularly imaginative way, but I will post the uh, or newsletter. Thanks, Noah. Um, so this is just kind of beginning to take shape. We've got a couple of people working on this, which is Camo, and forgive me, he's just joined, so I need to grab his name, but Chiron, apologies if I'm if I'm butchering any of this, um, but both been really, really helpful in kind of getting some initial ideas down. Um, and yeah, the plan is once season zero hopefully goes out, the, the, the week after that, then every single week we'll have a retro newsletter that goes out. Uh, and what's quite cool about that is we're also looking to get a sponsorship position on the uh, newsletter. Um, so hopefully that could be an interesting sort of first on-chain revenue generator for us as a DAO as well. So really cool, really exciting. Um, someone posted a link to sign up to the newsletter in here slightly earlier. So I will repost it if you're interested in having that come to you once it goes live in a couple of weeks then please sign up um, and yeah, hopefully uh, we can get that moving um, in time for the sort of week after season zero. Did you want to say something, Nela? Um, no, not for me. No, sorry, you came off me, I thought. Um, I thought you were trying to jump in. So yeah, cool, that's a lot of info and we're already kind of like 35 minutes in and we've got a fair few, a fair bit more to go through. So um, I know Mark, you wanted to shout out the benefit, so talk about um, sort of the IRL live event stuff and networking. I don't know if you can speak. Hey, I uh, just stepped out of a doctor waiting room, so I got maybe like a minute, but real quick. <laughs> <laughs> there's, um, we hadn't called it out publicly, publicly yet, but there's been plenty of people using these channels already. Um, I just wanted to call attention to uh, one of the best things you can do for your career, which is networking. So if you have a chance, uh, or if you live somewhere, um, that you think there might be uh, any other developer DAO members near you, check out the, the, the channels at the very bottom of the server. Jump in and see if you can grab coffee, beer, lunch, or dinner with anybody around you because uh, your, your networking is, is probably where your next uh, job opportunity or your next project idea is going to come from. So. Um, Use, use the DAO for, for all it's worth in, in that department. Um, additionally, there's, um, for, there's some live events uh, that, are, that are going on. Those are hackathons and conferences. If you plan to attend uh, any conferences in the near future, um, drop a link to what that is, and we'll add a new channel for it. And uh, we've already seen um, at least a couple times, um, just recently in Seattle and before then in London, some uh, DAO members got together to to meet up, um, grab a bite to eat, hang out, all that kind of good stuff. So we highly encourage you to do that. Those channels are towards the bottom of the server. Uh, but yeah, get, network get networking because that's one of the best values this DAO can give you immediately while we're figuring out everything else. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I know that there's lots of projects that have been stood up um, from people that have just like put out asks. I know I'm pretty, I'm sure people have got jobs already that I've seen. So absolutely, like what Mark's saying, like probably the biggest value add right now is 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 community and networking and collaboration. So yeah, double down on it and make the most of it. And um, if there's any live events that you're going to or hackathons that you want to take part in and you're maybe seeking other people to, to go or join you in the hackathon, if you there are request channels in each of those categories where if you drop it in to say, hey, I want to go this hackathon, one of us will jump in and, and create the channel and you can kind of try and maybe get a team of people that uh, can either go along to an event with you or join in a hackathon. And I think that's going to be a really, really way, really, really good way, as Mark says early on, for people to start really seeing some value um, from the community on top of everything else that's that's already going on. So yeah, uh, all super good stuff. So kind of the, the big thing, the really big thing that happened this week, which uh, hopefully everyone's excited about, is we got our season zero proposal out which um, is a really big step for uh, us as a community and definitely us as sort of uh, sort of really starting to become a DAO. Um, just to kind of a brief intro of what Season Zero is, is it's a, a, a provide some initial sort of structure for the DAO, some initial governance processes for the DAO so the community can propose and be involved in decisions or propose ideas and be heavily involved in decision making on how we move forward. <laughs> excuse me uh, and then a little bit around kind of organization within that structure as well as well as sort of some clear ambitions of what we want to achieve uh, in season zero um, so if someone could or I will try to find the link to the proposal and we'll drop it in thank you Ryan um, so uh, do go and have a look at uh, this page on discourse um, the whole proposal is uh, laid out there. Um, give us feedback, vote. Um, what will happen is this proposal will be up until Sunday. And assuming the vote is in favor by Sunday, it will then be elevated to snapshot. When we do that, we'll make sure to broadcast it out to the community. And as Nader said at the beginning, the more engagement and the more people we can get sort of engaging with these governance proposals and voting on these things, the better it is for us all as a community. So keep an eye out, do vote on the proposal as it stands on discourse. And then when we elevate it to snapshot, please vote there as well. So for anyone that's new to Web3 or doesn't know what snapshot is, um, if someone could post a link into the chat to our snapshot account, snapshot is a way that allows us to do voting based on... Um, ownership of the NFT, thanks Josh, ownership of the NFT that we all minted to get into the DAO. So it's a, a way for us to, to to get those votes up and allow only people who are actively in the community to be able to go vote on important governance decisions. Um, and I know Nader said earlier that average kind of engagement on these things tends to be about within the few percentiles. On our first vote, we were up to about a quarter. So we're doing really, really well. And the more we can keep this going, um, the more, uh, the better it will be for um, everyone, <laughs> excuse me, uh, and everyone in the community as well. Uh, so that's kind of a brief overview. I don't know if anyone else who's on the stage wanted to suggest anything or wanted to come in. I just want to say that uh, it's important that people vote. Uh, that's what makes us a, a community. That's what makes us a, a DAO. And it's very important that we keep doing that. Yeah, definitely. Without without these governance processes, um, we're just a Discord server, right? If we want to become a community um, that grows and makes decisions together, these governance procedures and voting is really, really important. Um, just to be absolutely clear, season zero is, uh, we've put this forward to get things moving, right? The community will decide on how all of this unfolds into the long term. Um, but we, we wanna lay some foundations in season zero to enable the community to operate in a more decentralized way over time. Decentralization is a spectrum and it's challenging to get right. If you decentralize everything straight away, it can often lead to a lot of inertia and very, very slow forward momentum. So it's, probably more centralized at the moment, but this 
proposal for season zero is the beginning of becoming a properly more decentralized organization. So it's, um, it's important to engage with and then season zero will really start nailing down exactly how we want to run governance, exactly how we want to organize as a community kind of way, um, way out into, into the future. Cool. Hey, yeah, this is Will. The, yeah, the only other thing to add to that is, yeah, not only like do we hope to figure out a lot of a lot of things. Um, so, for example, governance, like we've got some proposed governance things in there. But then, you know, the idea is that over the next month and a half, you know, a, a governance kind of guild forms and just dives into those even more. And then, you know, really it's going to anybody who's new here or just hasn't found a project to hop into yet, um, you know, with this season zero kicking off, that's going to provide a lot um, more of that onboarding flow into a place where you can kind of start contributing and adding value. So looking forward to that. Um, well, these live on our website, the missions, values, and goals that we approved, as well as maybe the season zero once we kind of get that, that rolling out. Have we thought about that? I haven't thought about it too much. There's um, several like tools that you can use that become like dashboards for DAO. So there's one called Boardroom. Uh, and there's several others. I'll post this in as, in as an example. And what it basically does is you've got discourse and you've got snapshot and other places and it brings them all into the same interface. So we could do that. Um, we definitely should put some of this stuff on our website. The season zero proposal is massive though. So we might want to work on a on a more refined um, manifesto. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. Or, um, that makes sense. I mean, I think like the main purpose of our site right now is is, is giving developers the ability to join the community, but that's actually going to not be the main purpose probably within just a couple of weeks because I'm assuming we'll be sold out of tokens at that point and then we're going to be moving on to kind of uh, other goals and stuff. So I just figured might be worth bringing up, but that makes sense. Um, that's a, that looks like a great tool and maybe we can could discuss this in a different meeting. Yeah, no, for sure. So a lot alongside kind of laying out the structure. So for those who haven't seen what we're proposing is uh, a core team um, of uh, people who are also then responsible for creating initial guilds. So guilds will be uh, places for people with shared interests and or skills to gather and begin to organize how those people uh, function within the DAO. So we have to begin with um, the community guild. So anyone that's interested in uh, helping like um, organize the community, make it more engaging, improve the server, that's the place to go. And then we've got um, the development guild, which is a, a, obviously a, probably about 90% of the server at the moment. So big task for them to begin with is to figure out how to break down the organization of the of, of development within the DAO as well. And then we have design, uh, writers, <laughs> excuse me, governance, as Will mentioned before, uh, and then also kind of marketing and biz dev. So we're, we, we've kind of structured it in this way so we can organize groups of skills and then projects will happen kind of independently either within a guild. So something like the DAO branding, for example, will just sit within the design guild, but something like the website is gonna draw resources across different areas. So within development, within design. Um, there's absolutely no way that this is perfect when we set it up, but it's a start for us to start building on. Um, and I guess also within this proposal, we are to, to some degree, um, asking uh, or requesting from the community a mandate to kind of move forward with this stuff. Um, but as I said before, this is uh, sort of the very first step towards becoming a properly decentralized community. So hopefully with that mandate and hopefully with this structure, we can um, move everyone forward fast, faster than otherwise towards um, sort of proper decentralized organization, um, which is kind of where, where we wanna be in the long run. Um, and then just to kind of reiterate the, the timeline for, for this proposal and season zero starting. So the discourse proposal that's out uh, that we shared in the chat just then will run until Sunday. So you've got until then to have a look and vote and leave comments. Uh, if that passes, we will then elevate that to a snapshot vote. Um, I haven't asked you yet, Will, but hopefully you're around Sunday, Monday to help us get the snapshot vote going. Yeah, dope. Okay, cool. Um, and then that will run until the start of our next town hall, which is the same time next week. So 5, 5 p.m. UTC um, on Friday next week. And it, fingers crossed it's passed, it, it's passed at that point and we can kick off 
season zero, which is essentially a, a period of time at the moment, two months with the potential of an extension for us to lay these foundations. Uh, we'll be looking to do an announcement post on Mirror as well, which is really exciting uh, over that weekend, um, just to kind of announce to the world more about Developer DAO and, and kind of how we're uh, pushing on with our season zero, which is going to be quite a big moment for us as a community uh, and uh, super, super exciting uh, to kind of see that go out. Is there anything anyone else wanted to add into that timeline or are we all good? Sounds great. Cool. Uh, oh, go on, Eric. Yeah, yeah. I think um, this is just the beginning. We we need people to to give us feedback. We want people to to express their opinions because I, I think this this has to be um, an effort for of everyone. So please uh, give feedback. Please um, give your opinions. It's it's important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for us to become decentralized, we need everyone's feedback and pitching. Um, uh, so yeah, whatever you see, whatever you think, like nothing should remain unsaid, like give the feedback and we can work out together how to make this better for the future. Um, KP asked about daylight saving times kicking in. So, uh, we use UTC, uh, I can't remember what it stands for because it's static, so it won't shift. Um, for me in the UK, that's meant it's just moved from six to five, but if you just do it based on UTC, uh, you will always know when it's at and over time we maybe can think about moving it if we feel the need to. Um, uh, yeah, that's something, sorry, I was going to say, we probably should um, just make sure we get with the community on that because um, if everybody, yeah, gets shifted an hour and I know, like, I think NA and EU sometimes are like a week apart. I have no knowledge of this stuff, but <laughs> we should probably, yeah, put something out there just so we can see because it might move, you know, into a meeting somebody else has or vice versa, so. Yeah, good shout. I was kind of relying on UTC, but that's a good point. And hopefully once all the daylight saving time changes have happened, maybe we can take a new poll as well to figure out if people would rather go back to the old time um, or or continue with kind of where we're left up after daylight savings time. So um, uh, the last thing I wanted to mention about kind of season zero, uh, Nader, if you want to jump up and anyone else, is kind of like the initial picture for the DAO and kind of what we see us potentially um, kind of focusing on to begin with. Um, I don't know if Nader or anyone else wants to jump up and join this conversation, but right now we're very much more akin to something like a, a social DAO and a community. There are a, a million different things we can become. It could be like a service DAO where we more act like a consultancy within Web3 and we distribute work and, and people get paid for it. We could be pure education. There's lots of other stuff that we can do, but um, certainly we we feel that the most important thing to get right to begin with, without a doubt, it seems like that's community and making this a great place to come for people to be able to network and collaborate and learn together. And we can sort of, sort of define the bigger picture and these other things that we can consider over the coming kind of weeks and months. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, in general, we're, we're still so early, but we've, like a lot of people have kind of have mentioned, I think we've been growing really quickly. A lot of the reason that we've been growing so quickly is uh, due to all the work that everyone here, not only in this meeting, but like in this room or anyone that's participated has done uh, from the website to the, um, you know, sharing all of the stuff that other people within the, the team are doing and, and just participating in the Discord. It's, it's, been, it's been wonderful to see. And yeah, you're right. The, the thing we need to figure out uh, to continue doing and making sure we don't... Um, you know, stray from why we've gotten this far already is definitely community. And a big part of uh, what, you know, we need to keep in mind, and, and it's part of our missions, values, and goals is definitely inclusion is inclusion and diversity. So if you know of anyone that um, is from an unrepresented uh, or under, uh, underrepresented community that you feel like it would be a good person to bring into the DAO, uh, message me. I'd be happy to get them in for free. I'll pay for the token. I'll do whatever. So that's just something to keep in mind uh, there. Um, about the general guidelines around uh, like what we're becoming, it's kind of hard to tell, but I can definitely start seeing some some things that are emerging. Definitely educational materials, and I think um, you know teaching and all that stuff. We've talked about that a lot, but one of the things that I'm definitely noticing is that we have like network effects that we can share, and I think that I've never really been a part of a community like this 
for like ever since I've been on Twitter or anything that has enabled me to kind of see other people that can leverage their audience to help other people uh, gain awareness for their own um, name and, and their own social media and stuff like that. For instance, like if you write a blog post, um, you know, often it's hard to kind of get a lot of people's eyes on it because maybe you don't have a huge social media following or whatever. And I think that one of the things that we're doing here is that we're using our platform to kind of help people spread uh, awareness for the stuff that they're building and the stuff that they're sharing. And ultimately, that is good for, for everyone. That's good for them. But it's also good for all the people that are learning because more people can see it and more people can learn from it. So this idea of, uh, of teaching, this idea of uh, sharing and learning in public, this idea of network effects from within the community and us building each other up. So ultimately, it would be great if like we all are growing our own personal you know, um, careers and stuff together here. And I think it's, it's just so much easier when you have other people rooting for you. And I feel like that's kind of what we have. Ultimately, what we end up becoming, um, I have no idea, but definitely those things are obviously working for us now. So we'll continue focusing and, and, and doubling down on those. And we'll just see what happens, you know. I'm, I'm really down for experimentation. So if people have ideas, throw them out there. Someone threw in that $200 million uh, avalanche um, grant that they're going to be using. So you're going to start seeing a lot of these types of uh, grants continuing to come out. So if you see a grant that, that seems interesting, we can apply for it as a DAO. Like we might say, okay, we want to get 100000 or 200000 bucks of this grant and we'll apply it to a handful of developers to just build some stuff out if, that, if that's what they want to do. Or maybe we'll put it into a uh, treasury here and we'll do avalanche events you know, for six months. There's all types of stuff that we can do together. And I think it's such more of a compelling use, uh, story for us to apply for these grants as a community because we're going to have uh, thousands of people not, and maybe even tens or even hundreds of thousands of people from our social media that we can draw that attention to for these other places or not places but these other protocols like avalanche and the other ones that are going to be out there with grants that are looking for developers to kind of build on so it's a perfect opportunity there so that's just something to keep in mind if you see any grant opportunities definitely throw them out there um, we might be able to to find out good working relationships with those protocols awesome thanks nada yeah i think during this first or oh foundational season of season zero uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how that bigger picture conversation uh, unfolds um, uh, I think quite natural for us at the moment we're already doing education NADA kicked off with the first event today um, quite a natural extension for kind of bringing developers together and helping them learn um, I think will also be jobs as well um, but there's so many other things that we can look at um, so throughout season zero, we'll be looking to sort of further define that and we'll be opening up spaces for the community uh, and everyone uh, to be able to, to pitch in ideas and debate and discuss kind of how we want to go. Um, all that said, um, we, we, we do need as a community to have some focus. There was a very good um, forum post that was put up by Will, who's up here. I'm just trying to find the link. Uh, with quite the funny title of um, if you want to go far, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. If you want to go nowhere, start a DAO. So uh, I like it. Uh, it made me laugh, but there's some really interesting points in here about us as a community coming together and uh, during season zero coming together and deciding on a focus uh, and some things that we can really, really get behind uh, as a community. But then even if we only choose sort of two or three uh, or however many headline projects that we want to push as a community, like this should not be a suggestion that people shouldn't be building. We're all here to build shit, like crack on and do it. Uh, we want the space to be perfect for anyone coming in, looking to find collaborators for projects. Uh, and then the, the community, as Nader says, with the network effects that we have achieved, can really elevate people's work. I know Noah, who's up here, posted an interesting point about what Nader was alluding to around to the the extra reach that you can get for your just content. Um, so yeah, anything that's built within the community will be elevated. And then during season zero, we'll be looking uh, to the community to try and identify some sort of um, bigger picture items that we can focus on really building and, and elevating kind of as the DAO as well. Um, but I'll post that post into the chat. Ah, there we go, it's there, thanks Nathan. Uh, it's definitely worth a read in terms of where this thinking is coming from. Uh, I think it was an excellent thing that maybe didn't get the engagement that 
it deserves because it was so early, Will. Um, you're, just, uh, you're just too quick off the draw. Um, but yeah, that's great about season zero. Um, do we want to have offer a space for questions now or do we want to give an update on the Gitcoin partnership first? What do we think? Let's do the update on the coin and then we'll take questions. And we might stay a little over and if anyone wants to leave, that's, that's of course fine. But uh, yeah, we might go a little over there. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, um, we've been speaking for a little while and this was initiated by, by NADA about a partnership that we're sort of in early to mid stages of discussing with uh, Gitcoin. So if anyone doesn't know, if someone could pop a link into the developer's voice text to Gitcoin, that would be really appreciated. Ooh. Okay, cool, yeah. So Gitcoin were one of the big early successful projects in this space in terms of um, connecting the community together and offering uh, ways for people to earn, learn, and fund uh, a sort of learn, earn, um, earn on-chain revenue from building in the web free space and also fund projects in the web free space as well. There's probably several people uh, that I've known and this was their first kind of paid work that they ever did in web free. So Gitcoin are, are an awesome community. Uh, they have a separate um, work stream to what they do called the Moonshot Collective as well. So if anyone was on the call with um, we're on the stream with Nader earlier. Uh, the Moonshot Collective is a separate work stream of theirs, which is very much about about learning. Um, and it has people like Austin Griffiths, who was on the stream with uh, with Nader earlier as well. So what we're what we're talking to Gitcoin about is a uh, a long term partnership um, where we build. Uh, public goods together and we engage each other's communities and there's kind of like a mutual beneficial uh, relationship that passes back and forth but one of the really uh, the other interesting thing is that uh, Gitcoin uh, we're in in the conversation is uh, the potential for Gitcoin to allocate some funding to Ardell um, and that funding will be for us to be able to lay down the foundations and stand up some operations and hopefully retain some uh, some core people, part or full time, so we can focus on making sure everything's in place during season zero, so the community can really really grow. So they, the the proposal's not written. It's we were still talking to them about it, but it's really really exciting, and I think it could be the launch pad that kind of gives us the partnership and security that we need to be able to build out much faster than we otherwise would have been able to. Yeah, so Gitcoin and Developer DAO have such aligned incentives. Like we're both really, really kind of uh, striving for the same goal with different approaches. And the funding that they've offered us is non-trivial. So it's it's a, it's a lot more than we ever expected, honestly, to see. I don't want to kind of uh, give the amount until we've 100% locked it down, but it's pretty close to being 100% locked down. It seems like we have the agreement pretty much finalized. But it's going to be um, essentially enough for us to really fund our treasury for for quite a long time. I mean, uh, at least uh, in my opinion, it's it's enough to to do a lot and pay someone literally uh, full time and maybe multiple people to work full time um, if we if we needed that to to continue doing this thing. So that's it's amazing. I mean, right now, Will and uh, Will and all these other people that are here. Um, that are kind of uh, doing stuff. It's great in their free time and stuff. And we we understand that a lot. Like even you know um, participating in other DAOs. Um, don't I don't always participate uh, to maybe get uh, paid. You know I maybe have a token or something that appreciates um, based on my um, participation in, in those communities. But if we have someone working full time and if we have people taking responsibility, we can compensate them. That's where we want to be. So that's and that's where we're headed. And it's only been two months in, so it's it's really wild. I'm really excited about it. I uh, don't want to like, you know, make a one million percent promise, but it seems to to be happening. So that's pretty exciting. And uh, the details for that will be definitely announced uh, once that is, you know, I would say we have a one hundred thousand percent confirmation <laughs> on this. Probably do an announcement in the channel. We'll do a tweet. Um, either way, it's it's big news and it's really exciting. And I never really did not expect this. It's, it's a lot more than uh, I expected after speaking with them. And this whole thing has just actually been a lot more successful, I would say, than I ever expected. So it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's really exciting. Um, 
Though the proposal, uh, much like our governance process, will have to move through Gitcoin's governance process. So we will get it as as uh, we're writing it in partnership with um, the people uh, with the team at Moonshot Collective and uh, Gitcoin. So. Hopefully that should should give it a good chance, but um, these things always need to pass through governance processes. So um, hopefully, fingers crossed, it all goes through. I think it will be an amazing partnership for us over the long term, and I think the two organisations can achieve uh, really achieve quite a lot together. As Nader said, the the goals and the values, everything's so well aligned. Um, like if anyone saw Austin earlier when he was on the stream of Nader such a good dude like everyone's got this mission that um i think is really close to ours as well so yeah super stoked about that and hopefully over the next week or so we can kind of get that closer to to something that we can share um but yeah super super exciting so i guess are we ready to start taking some questions yeah i think so um yeah if anyone's got any questions there's a Handy little hand button, you should be able to uh, pop your hand up and we can bring you up. Or if you have a comment, either way. Somebody just needs to do it so we know it works. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yay, we got some. Okay, so uh, Proposo, uh, I don't actually know, here we go, invite to speak. Did it work? Invite sent. Voila! Go ahead, Proposo, welcome. Yeah, oh, can you hear me? Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> um, well, well, it was kind of just to, to, <laughs> to test this out, but, uh, but also... <laughs> Um, well, I'm a, I'm a little bit new to the community, so I'm not, I'm not sure if this was discussed before or not. Uh, but we were kind of discussing a little bit about the kind of like the entry, uh, um, uh, like the, the way to, to make more people uh, join the, the DAO as well. Uh, and I was just wondering if we are kind of uh, uh, aiming to explore um, other kind of uh, chains, like for example, like Solana, uh, if it made sense to, to have like the, the kind of like the DAO token also available in other kind of chains. Uh, which would make it easier for people that are not kind of uh, into the, the Ethereum kind of uh, blockchain. Um, I'm not yeah, sure that, I'm I love that. That's a great question. Does the program that we use support Solana tokens? Does anyone know that? Collabland, do you mean? Collabland, yeah. I don't know. Because if it yeah. does, that would be a really you know cool thing for us to try out. And I was going to say, too, I think this is like one of those great questions that like as we enter season zero now, like the community can start talking about. And, um, you know, Kip, remind me, do we have a community guild? We do. Yeah. 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 So so like that probably is like the perfect place for that discussion to happen. Um, I know a lot of people are excited about Immutable um, X. I know their token just went live today. Um, so layer two NFT solution backed by Ethereum security, we got Solana. So there's lots of options. And then, you know, we as a community can kind of like weigh the options of like just opening up the floodgates, um, as opposed to like, you know, having some sort of, um, you know, token gated community and just all that together is things we can dive into, into, into season zero. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot to unpack in that question as well. If, if, it sucks having a barrier to entry that um, certain people in certain situations for whatever reason can't join the community. That said, if we lowered the barrier to entry to essentially zero, like we would have probably tens of thousands of people at the moment and it would be really, really difficult to manage. So there is a balance to strike. And as Will says, we can definitely figure that out during season zero. Um, but it's, it's important that people have some skin in the game, I feel. I don't know how, what other people feel. Um, so there is a balance to strike, but yeah, it's a really important question that we, we should look at in season zero. And then onwards from that, once we get our governance token launched, we can then potentially create other routes into the DAO that are worth thinking about as well. So potentially like, um, bounties that are external that people can take and build on to gain tokens to get into the DAO. 
maybe some kind of like apprenticeship scheme. Like there's loads of different ways we've seen people do it. But yeah, it's a really important question that we're going to need to answer soon anyway, because the NFTs are going to run out. Um, but yeah, lots of different ways you can look at that and tackle it. But that's a, a really good question. Does that answer it for you? Is it is it Proposo? Yeah, well, only Bernardo as well. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's, um, yeah it, it was just uh, kind of like opening up the, 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 um, the question. And uh, I can see that there's a lot of uh, baggage uh, with that as well. Um, <laughs> Uh, and it's and even technolo technologically it's not an uh, easy thing um if we want to support more things um yeah yeah i think from yeah from this point we can we can start discussing it as well that's good yeah dope man thanks thanks very much for the question Who's yeah, going? I know. Uh, I know Manny came up here. wasn't sure, if, Manny, if you had a question or just wanted to be available. And then uh, Juji, if I'm pronouncing that right, was also up. Uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, ask a little bit more about, um, uh, like, if there, if there's anything kind of in the in the in the pipes for making uh, the developer DAO NFTs a little more accessible. So, like, I know, for instance. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure we can just migrate everything to Polygon, including minting. Um, I don't know if anyone's read much about that. And then uh, the other thing is, um, I, I don't know if you, uh, any of you know about Kernel, but they, they have an interesting um, sort of learning track path where it's you lock up, um, I think it's 400 die for the duration of while you're doing their learning material. And then when you finish, uh, the die is released and you can either choose to get paid out in die or they have learned tokens. Um, if you take a die, they take the interest accrued from your amount while you were learning. Uh, and that's what they pay the instructors with. Uh, if you choose learn tokens, uh, you get the equivalent amount of die plus the interest. So like you, you kind of keep everything, but then you're also participating in the community. Just uh, throwing it out there. Interesting idea. Yeah. So Polygon, that's a good, uh, that's a good point. So like we could probably m deploy the same or a similar contract to Polygon and, um, and allow people to mint if we wanted to expand the number of people we wanted to get into the, the, the DAO one day or, or whatever. But the, um, I don't think we could, you know, move what we already have over there and continue the leave like leaving or continuing off where we left today unless we maybe lock the contract we have now and, and try to do something like that uh we thinking like if we de decided to do a new contract uh for nfts to use polygon as opposed to um ethereum or are you thinking for the actual the um the pixel ones that we're doing soon you're thinking that maybe we should consider polygon uh I don't know. It's it's it, it kind of depends a little bit on what you're trying to get out of it. If you're if you're just like trying to like make it super accessible as easily as possible, um, like a minimal fee to mint on Polygon, I think is way more accessible for more people. Um, just because like the cost to mint is like less than a dollar versus like sixty yeah, totally. or eighty whatever gas is. Maybe we can do a vote on that. Uh, that 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 seems yeah. that seems like a good idea. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think that speaks to you know instead of just like somebody making the decision like Nick uh, Natter making the decision to just like instantly launch it on Polygon or something like that. Like we definitely want this to be a DAO community driven decision and to think through more of those like complicated pieces um, uh, around you know you're you're not as civil resistant. Meaning you know somebody like we have somebody who who's minted seventy of these uh deb nfts but you know that probably cost them you know at the least a few you know a thousand dollars whereas on polygon you could mint 70 for 40 dollars and so um just those type of questions need to be thought through um i'm i'm really bullish on like the l2 um stuff that's coming out on ethereum right now stuff like immutable x and you you um are are you know, able to to put out nfts that are truly backed by uh, ethereum security and so like all that stuff i think it, it like let's dive into it in season zero i think these are great questions yeah I uh, another, another sorry just real quick another bonus of doing it on something like polygon is um like e e even if you make like the total minting process like caused about the same 
as L1 Ethereum. So it comes out to like 60 or $100 or whatever. Um, instead of that going to gas fees, that, that could like go into like the Dow Treasury or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's a point. Yeah, like you zero out the, the uh, variable gas fee, but then you have the kind of set purchase price that potentially could go to the Treasury. And then, yeah, you got to deal with um, potentially some legality issues there. But I think that's a great, great idea. Yeah, um, the derivatives team are probably going to hate me, um, but I think it's definitely worth us considering that. I imagine Gold Zulu is turning in his grave right now. I kind of lent on the guys um, for the Pixel Avatars, the first derivative version, um, to get that up and get that out um, on layer one. But I think particularly considering where we're at with Gitcoin, hopefully, um, and uh, our, we, we need to become more inclusive in that way. Um, I think there's yeah, one conversation, the Genesis NFT, and then I think there's a separate conversation, the um, derivative uh, NFTs uh, as well. But I think we should have that conversation in the open. And um, yeah, if I if, yeah, if I may say, uh, Kemp's the the derivatives project sort of taken that into account. Uh, we are actually using a kind of a, a, the the Morales frameworks, kind of like a front end to. Uh, make sure that, uh, you know, as new blockchains comes out, we can sort of plug that in. Uh, obviously, we can uh, cut off, uh, you know, de decouple it from Morales. We're not bound to Morales, but uh, as a kind of a, a, a forward thinking, we we sort of uh, have, have gone along the Morales path because they're going to come out with Solana soon. Uh, they're already on Avalanche and a lot of uh, uh, polygons out there. So then we don't have to reinvent the wheel kind of thing. And, and uh, if we do want to actually, uh, uh, when the time comes, uh, the decision making for the DAO, where we want to move, then tech shouldn't be a hindrance. Since I got unmuted, I can just jump in briefly. Um, Nader mentioned this ages ago, and it's worth picking up on that. I quite like it conceptually. So I think one of the problems when, especially when gas fees are high, is that it wasn't accessible, right? Um, I think we all know that, but sponsoring people to join becomes potentially kind of interesting. I don't know how they will feel themselves, um, either the DAO or DAO members paying for them to join. I don't know if that's like always, like it could be positively or negatively signaled. Um, but it also allows us to, um, at least protect us from getting spammed because you know what it's going to be like, right? It's going to be all bots DMing us with like the latest shit coin. Um, so yeah, maybe sponsoring people almost actually affinity style is potentially something that breaks like quite a, like a mental tie to the DAO. You know, you've been sponsored, you've, you've, you've joined it. Um, you feel part of the team. Um, the other alternative, which at least like probably about 10 or 15 people was expecting me to say is, um, even if we reduce the price quite low, we can create problems, mathematical problems or developer problems that mean they have to put a lot of effort into actually um, getting a token. Um, so as you know, I'm quite into zero knowledge proofs. So I'm sure we can find an elaborate way of, of um, stopping everyone spamming the system. Uh, so I, I'm not sure whether you guys know about the way that at times uh, is being done in terms of the, uh, the, to tackle the solution. What they do is just solving with a pope kind of thing. So you have to attend a pope, and uh, and then if you have that pope plus the original uh, or whatever, then uh, you you can then uh, is given kind of a slot, so you can choose then what time you actually want to actually uh, mint your token. Uh, so then it decouples it from uh, you know very high gas fees at a particular point of time. You can always mint whenever it's actually low. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it, these are all really, really interesting different ways that we can solve the problem. Like it's going to be super, super interesting to see kind of what what wins out um, during season zero. Um, in terms of like Genesis token, changing that now, that's one conversation. Future derivative versions is another conversation. And then we've also got like um, our governance token, which we, which we intend to at least get a long way towards launching dur during season zero. Um, yeah. and then if that becomes uh, the future mechanism for entering the DAO then there's a whole different 
ways that we could do, like Joff is mentioning around sponsoring or uh, bounties or problem solving. Like it's going to be a really interesting um, problem for us to solve as a group. Yeah, there's, um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of discussions happening here that are like a lot different, uh, depending on, you know, which one I'm talking about. But uh, going back to the idea of us creating another contract to allow more members to join, I think once we hit that 8,000 token mark, we're probably not going to have um, any, anyone new join us uh, for a while. You know, we're going to have all of those uh, extra tokens that are on the market. Some people might uh, like leave and sell them on OpenSea, um, you know, and, and things like that. And, and then we have, of course, like uh, like I mentioned, a few hundred uh, set to the side that we can we can maybe allow a few people in. But I think at that point we'll stop growing and we'll focus on um, you know polishing what we have. And um, only when we issue our governance token will we decide then like what's the next mechanism to onboard users because um if you look at kind of what friends of benefits is doing and i kind of also often mention them only because they're an uh, extremely successful um example of a dow they have you know opened another form of membership because uh, at first to get in was like twenty dollars um a year later it's like ten or fifteen thousand dollars so that's very unaccessible right but they, they haven't kind of like stopped people from joining. You can still join, you just have to pay. But they then opened another layer that people can join in on that's like $5, I think, or something like that. And you don't get access to everything. You get access to certain channels. So there are all types of stuff like that that we can explore. But I do think that once we kind of like hit that 8,000 uh, mark, which will probably end up being in, in reality, maybe like a half of that. So maybe like 4,000 true members, maybe 3,000 in the, in the Discord, and then maybe 1,000 active or 2000 active, I don't know, like, you know, but you have to kind of think the actual people that are participating, that will be like the core community starting off. And then we'll figure out what we want to do uh, after that. Another just quick note is that um, I didn't mention this earlier, but if we do go the route of uh, getting this funding from Gitcoin, and we, if we do go the route of, of issuing a governance token and all this stuff, um, we need some very competent people that have like done this stuff before. So we're considering, you know, uh, different ways that we can collaborate and get help from other people. And I've mentioned that uh, I've met with uh, Cooper Turley in the past, and uh, he's one of the founders of a handful of DAOs, and, and he's he's very active in Audius and um, Friends with Benefits, and he has pretty good connections uh, in general ar around the DAO space. So he's in um, Lisbon this week with me, um, and we're meeting in a couple of days to kind of talk about some of this stuff. And I'm considering um, proposing that we bring in something like someone like that as an advisor, someone that can answer a lot of these really, really tough questions for us, or at least guide us in that way. And, and, and then we can, of course, bring those to vote. But I think someone that's been through this stuff for the last two or three years has learned the hard way. And like, I don't, I don't want to learn the hard way. I want to kind of learn from other people that have learned the hard way and then take their advice. And then um, that way we can kind of like avoid those types of mistakes. Also, bringing someone like that in as, a, as an advisor will obviously like, uh, we'll be able to, to network effect with his network and the network that he's connected to as well. And um, I think it'll just be uh, possibly a really good uh, decision if we can figure that relationship out. So that's another thing that, that I just wanted to kind of throw out there. So yeah, sorry to get off topic though. Can I ask a question now? Uh, is, is yeah, that's turn? great. Yeah, I think yeah, <laughs> Manny was next and Stephanie. All right, so my, my question is, um, is there a timeline in terms of, uh, or an estimated timeline in terms of that uh, ratified agreement between Gitcoin and developer DAO? Only reason I'm asking is that I need to know if I should be giving my two weeks notice today or Monday, uh, <laughs> which just would be great for scheduling my career. <laughs> oh, I love you, Manny, that's very funny. Um, so we are uh, offering the proposal over the next, sort of first draft over the next few days. Uh, and then we will share that with um, uh, Ryan, who some of you may have seen in the server, is goes by Moonshot Coordinator. He is responsible for running uh, Moonshot Collective. Uh, and then uh, also, um, is it Steve Nadam? Nader? Nada? Um, I think at Gitcoin. Yes. Yeah, and they're going to co-author that with us. So, Steve Owaki. Yeah, and then, and then Owaki. So it will, we're, we're looking to, to get them a draft of the proposal over probably by uh, early, middle next week, and then refine it with them, hopefully maybe towards the end of next week into the first week of season zero, assuming everything passes, but it will then need to go through Gitcoin's governance procedure. And I'm certainly not exactly sure how long that takes, um, but hopefully we can get the proposal at least 
nailed down in the next uh, week and a half to two weeks. Um, and uh, then it's kind of up to the governance gods at Gitcoin. But hopefully with it being authored by um, Ryan and Steve and Milwaukee, then um, we should get it over the line. Um, it's, so yeah, maybe like two to three weeks, an optimistic time scale, but maybe expect it to be a bit longer. But again, I don't know how their governance works, so can't fully answer the question at the moment. So I'm hearing four weeks notice. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's it? Are you, are, you in, are you in America? Isn't it like two weeks in America? When you're doing remote dev, it's it's six months, three weeks. <laughs> Even you can rage quit sometimes. So. Okay. We'll make sure to give you the uh, the rage quit warning when it's going through. But we'll be updating the community as this progresses over the next few weeks. I think I think that Ryan. Um, uh, Moonshot coordinator is hopefully going to join us up here next week. Um, I'm just waiting for him to confirm, uh, but then he can maybe help shed some some more light on what that looks like after it's gone to Gitcoin, if that makes sense. Cool. Thanks, Manny. Um, Stephanie, welcome. All right. I'm not sure if uh, Kemp maybe is there. If he, are you back? Yeah, I muted myself when I was trying to invite someone up. Uh, yeah, I think Stephanie was next. Yeah, yeah. Stephanie, welcome. Hopefully you're still with us. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm patient. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Thank you. So uh, I was going to comment on, uh, I guess this kind of overlaps with the inclusion piece of it. Um, I guess coming from an underrepresented group, but at the same time also, you know, two things, which is like the junior developer, the people that are new. Like, so I think that having even just now, just like I joined the developer DAO finally, and I was like, forget it. Who who, who cares how much the guest fees are? I'm going all in, right? Uh, which was like way too much money. But anyways, I'm here. And the thing is that it was like, a massive like it has like a reddit feel and it's real like oh my god <laughs> it's so overwhelming of uh, what's happening here uh but i think it's just the nature of discord because not the only discord i'm in it's not the only discord server i have um but there's just like some there are some stigmas and things that exist with discord and then the other thing is that it'd be helpful to have my dog. It'd also be helpful to have some kind of like I don't know roadmap or something. So it's for the different guilds, like how to get here, do this, how to join a project, those kind of things. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, uh, going back to the idea of Discord in general. Um, I wrote a tweet about six months ago that was just basically trashing Discord. And, um, you know, it was my first time I, I really using it at that time, uh, maybe six to eight months ago. And uh, even now, after using it for another six to eight months, I'm still not able to just keep up with everything going on. I'm, I'm a member of, at this point, also like 20 Discords. So I really only open up at this point like three of them. I open up this one and one for work and then... Um, the friends with benefits one sometimes. And, and even that is pretty overwhelming. I think it's just the nature of discord and we have so many channels. I think one way to kind of um, make that experience a little easier is just to mute all the channels that you're not interested in. And then that way you don't see those notifications pop up and you feel less likely to, to need to just click in and see what's going on there. Um, but I also feel like for me, at least over time, it became easier to manage and um, I was able to kind of, um, feel less anxiety when I opened it, even though it's still kind of overwhelming. But, um, but yeah, if anyone I mean, else has any, yeah. So I'm talking about like the, the, before you ever get there, like the stigma of it, which is that this is this like closed community, right? So it has the same kind of vibe as like when people, like just, just if you kind of just look at, I, I don't know, I interact with a lot of black women, right? 
So it like knowing the the experiences, uh, and it's like, okay, yeah, Reddit, absolutely not. Twitch, mm, tough one. The uh, then it's like Discord. Oof, my God. It, it, it's you know, it's like YouTube. Okay, at least I'm getting paid. Like, there's just so many levels. So the actual stigma of being in a Discord before you ever get to see all of the channels and stuff. Right is a is a thing. So like the oh, whole interesting. yeah, that's something I don't know much about, but it's but it's eye opening to hear actually. Oh, it's it's like normal, like uh, it like it's 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 yeah. That's why I said I. I mean, it's my people I interact with. So it's normal for me. So I'm like, oh my god. But then at the same time, coming from the developer aspect, so I'm a little bit more like open to it like i'll i'll be on a reddit thing i'm not deep into it though because it's like uh, <laughs> be careful uh but at the same time it's like you know i'll still be there um so i'm just saying that first like before you can ever like say like how, well how do you navigate the thing it's like well one okay what's this developer down thing okay making it accessible oh it's on discord okay uh, all right, you know, like making sure like that's cool. Then it's like, what's what are y'all, what are y'all doing? You know, you know, like just having a, you know, these are the kind of like, to, speaking of public goods, like having a public good around that this is good, <laughs> as opposed to, because everybody says you know inclusion or whatever, like, but actually having some kind of you know, really meaning it, right? Like, so then it's like, oh, okay. Then you come in the town hall and it's a bunch of white dudes. And it's like, oh, okay, yay. Um, you know what I mean? Like, j just kind of, just thinking a little bit deeper into like the things that are keeping people, not just the sponsorship, right? Like where it's like you know, missing the money because of the gas fees and stuff. It's like, once you could say you could get over that hurdle and you get a couple hundred dollars and you just go, then it's like, okay. Yeah, this yeah, is I mean, a we're lot. Open, yeah. Mike, we're totally open for any suggestions to improve that, actually. So coming from perspective that you have, uh, you have a lot more perspective than any of us have. And if you could put together any ideas around how we can improve uh, some of the feeling around that, that would be great. I think the reason that we... And, and not just us, but pretty much every other uh, like DAO is using Discord is just because they have all of the tools and stuff like built into the software. So like for um, cool. allowing ownership with the tokens and, and, and being able to then like, you know, if you don't like the, the if someone decides if they are, maybe they bought like three or four tokens and they appreciate it, they're able to, to get their return like on their initial investment back by on, on a on the open market and stuff but um but yeah i mean i i appreciate the feedback and i think it's it's extremely valuable for us to to understand how we can uh, make this better and if you can take some time with me or with anyone or even on your own and document some ideas that you have uh, to make this better then we would love to 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 do that yeah i could write some stuff down so yes. stephanie i think one of the the core cool goals during season zero that's outlined for the community guild is how do we make onboarding better as well um so it'd be super interesting to get some some input on that as we've seen other DAOs do it where you have like um there's a DAO called Taoists where you have like um i think they're called docents so people that are specifically um trained maybe a strong word but people that as whose specific role within the community is welcoming new people and helping them find their feet um so maybe we could do things like that um, but yeah, we'd love love to have as much input as possible as as possible um, across all of that stuff, um, uh, and hopefully we can we can start making it better soon. Hey, can we take um, away from this meeting to like set up a call next week and find some time that um, people can definitely like voice some of this and get it out there and and talk some more about it? I think that might be helpful. I know I'm seeing some. Um, chat conversations as well, um, and that would that would I think be super helpful for for people to have you know a set time to to talk. Would that be interesting? I see Don saying yeah. Okay, great. 
Stephanie, I think yeah, I think that'd be great. Like I'm down. You know, I, I didn't know like I was I was in it, so I'm in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah 100%. do it. No, that's it. And yeah, you know, I think so many of us are new here, and um, and uh, yeah, just want everybody involved with this and um, can can learn a lot. So yeah, absolutely, let's do it. Yeah. So that was one side. The other part uh, was about data. So I know somebody mentioned about different things and stuff like that. I know it's developer doubt, but they know there's a wide range. And so I was wondering what's the ways to get involved from that sense. I kind of come at it from a currently as a data engineer right now. So it's just kind of seeing, you know, to put those things to good use people like pictures and visualizations and stuff too. So. Yeah, I think that's bundled into the, the onboarding challenge. Um, we've got like a super rudimentary way of like allocating yourself a role at the moment so in the onboarding channel you can select that your interests are, or skills are in data or in design we're missing a lot of stuff from that like writing or a million other things that people can be interested in or, or, or skilled in or want to do um and i think that's going to be yeah i think if we get that conversation open to find out kind of people's honest thoughts and feelings about things and maybe start uh, spitballing for want of a better word some ideas of how we can improve um because i think if we if we get the onboarding thing right and we have input from people with lots of different perspectives then hopefully it can make everything around that um uh sort of more more inclusive for everyone um yeah absolutely i feel you okay i'm done Yeah, thank you again for sharing. Who is next? I think uh, Eco was probably next, and then um, Torsif. Apologies if I'm uh, not getting. Can I jump in? Right. Yeah, um, I just have to jump off in about five or ten minutes. Just letting you know. So if you all see me pop, uh, drop off, uh, thank you for uh, everyone that showed up. So go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, Eco, if you want to jump in. Are you still with us? Okay, we'll go to um, to Torsif. Did you have a question? Welcome up. Is this like total awkward silence right now? <laughs> it's either Torsif or Eco. Uh, I think he might. Hey, this have... is the first dev down. Despite everyone's like trying to be as silent as they possibly can and be the longest. Like, how long do we go without like actually saying something? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they don't, uh, yeah, if, if, you, if, if any of you guys uh, or there's yeah, T, T, yeah, I just T, lost it. T Linda yeah. um, is up here. Hey, what's oh, up? Well, jump in there. I had a quick question. Yeah, go to Linda, man. Yeah, just ask. Okay. It. Yeah, I didn't hear anybody. I just didn't know if, if my mic was not working. Um, uh, yeah, I appreciate you letting me jump up here and uh, talk real quick. So something that just came to came to me uh, before Stephanie spoke, and and it's actually kind of ties into what uh, she talked about as well. Is I'm I'm, I'm I myself am new to uh, development in general. I've been really busting my butt to learn as much as I can and, and onboard myself onto Web three. And I'm really excited to uh, join this DAO and uh, looking forward to learning a lot and also finding ways for me to contribute. And so something that kind of uh, I've been thinking about is uh, like, uh, you know, the imposter syndrome is real for me, at least. It's it's always there um, and no matter how much more I learn. And so I was just thinking about uh, leveraging the way Discord has like a ranking system with uh nfts where maybe you could perhaps have something like um some kind of ranking system that lets people that ranks people based on their contributions for the work that they do for the different types of projects that they might be involved in 
um, but also on competence. So like if, uh, you know, for example, if I make a contribution to a project or something, it could be very small or it could be uh, larger, but whatever that competence is, I, I let the community or the folks I'm working with kind of, they have, they kind of decide, you know, this, Jose worked on this and he's shown this kind of competence. That's some kind of ranking system. And what's, what I would find cool about that is I'm getting some kind of positive feedback on what I'm doing. It gives me some, some, uh, some better feelings about how I feel about how I am on my path to becoming a developer and then tying that to an NFT that kind of helps you kind of confirm that competence to others. And I was just thinking like when you were talking about, uh, you know, finding ways to onboard more people, even something like that, like having, letting people earn and onboarding uh, ranking when they bring at least one person on and they onboard them and kind of walk them through the DAO because it, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to consume. And I myself have been trying to kind of stay on board of it as well and keep up with it. There's a lot of channels, a lot of stuff going on. And uh, so anyway, this is, again, this is just in my head and I haven't really flushed it out. Just something kind of came came to me listening to uh, the conversations that, that are going on right now. So I just wanted to kind of bring that up. Yeah, so I think that's definitely something uh, we need to look at. Um, one of the, the good things about the Dele where developer DAO is now is we can build that together from, from the ground up in terms of how we maybe go about doing that kind of leveling. Uh, I think when we move towards having... Um, as, as well Wait as a minute, I've spotted a trend. It would normally be Kempster who's speaking. So I reckon... He's got a microphone problem or something. Is that right? I think where's, you might where's where's Kempster's something voice? because Kempster was just talking. Can you, could you not hear him? Um, just in a sort of similar vein to that, um, one, of, one of the DAOs I've joined, um, I can't remember what it was. Is it Ethernet DAO, something like that? Um, it's not necessarily been executed in practice, but when you join the DAO, they basically let you say if you're a mentor or a... Um, uh, mentee, I guess. I'm not sure they really pair people up too much yet, but um, it would be quite nice to, in the spirit of what I was thinking about onboarding as well, maybe have people who are quite keen to take a few under their wing, <laughs> help each other out a bit. Um, I was actually just replying to someone about the cryptography stuff and thinking in that vein as well. Is my audio working or? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. yeah, so um, yeah, that, that's a really interesting um, sort of problem, but also opportunity for us to address, I think. Um, like, like a lot of these things, there's a, when you start peeling back that problem, there are lots of different facets to it. So um, not just how do we do that, but how do we implement it in Discord and all of these ways? There's loads there. And I think... Season Zero's purpose is to figure out the answer to these questions. Um, and then from a, a, like a governance perspective in the future, it's, it's likely that the governance token that we launch will be linked towards people's contributions and, and the level that they achieved within the organization. So it's, it's a, there's a lot, lot of different facets to it, but we, I think you're, you're absolutely right. Um, I think the two points you made were kind of like leveling people by contributions and that's going to become really important in terms of recognizing people's contributions and also being able to reward them and then also uh, maybe leveling people by um, their knowledge and ability so maybe we can create paths or support paths or learning paths through which they can move through to 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 get better or, or sorry to yeah to, to learn more and develop their skills more so yeah they're, they're two like super interesting problems were, were they the two main things you were getting at eco in terms of being able to to provide that kind of leveling around people's knowledge and ability and around kind of the contributions to the to the community and i do see um the order DAO, uh, becoming a some type of school um, where you can um, mentor and learn from from more experienced uh, developers 
and we with the proof of work that we can provide that you build some project. I, th I do think we can become that. Yeah, and I think we have to rethink about uh, how education works and how people get jobs and uh, completely just trash everything we ever knew in the past. Because I'm seeing people come into uh, this Web3 space or even in the, the, the traditional web space in the last year or two that uh, completely or just uh, have zero experience, but they just uh, come into the right communities. Uh, they, they, they learn in public. They jump in and they help people out when they can and they get, they get hired. And they get hired for uh, non-trivial work in the sense of like they're getting paid a lot better than anything that they've had in the past. So I also could th think we can reconsider um, what that even looks like uh, to begin with. Because like in the past, you sat down and you spent like six months or a year or two years learning an X number of skill set. When in reality, every single uh, project or team that you uh, work with has this is strange. different... So according to the main hey, feed, hey, there Jeff. are actually people who are talking... It, it seems like separately. Yeah, it hey, seems like a lot of people can't so actually hear you guys. Oh, really? Someone uh, so people cannot hear me. There's uh, there's people saying that they can't hear the conversation. I can hear you and Kemp, but uh, I'm gonna jump off and come back on. All right. Can everyone hear me now? Yeah, I can. Yeah, it seems like everybody can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I guess we uh, and I and I and I also think we're like very far over time, and I and I don't want to get into the habit of us going like this far over because I know a lot of people have um, things that they they need to do. But the last comment from me is that um, yeah, around um, teaching and learning and stuff, and I think that there are just massive, massive opportunities here because no one's really kind of exploited the idea that uh, getting a job today is just completely, completely not anything like we could think of 20 years from now. And we need to throw away almost all of those ideas and kind of rethink this. So I think that we might be able to kind of like come up with uh, some type of materials or, or, or some type of guidance to kind of get people in the mindset that they need for 2000 and. Uh, and 22, right, with um, this connected world with where uh, Web3 comp companies are hiring, uh, paying in tokens, and they're doing grants. You don't have to have, like, a skill set that you thought you might have had to get something, um, to get paid for something. As long as you can accomplish a task, then you can get paid for that task. So how do we kind of, like, take people that have certain skill sets and give them the opportunities to connect with people that were willing to pay for that skill set and also how do we give them that skill set to begin with so yeah i mean i think that um there's some huge opportunity there again i've seen so many people just in the last six months that that message me and are like hey i took your uh nft or your your whatever uh tutorial and i built a bunch of shit on put on github and i got hired like a month later and like i've never gotten hired before it happens all the time or people that have just joined a community like uh, someone uh, notable that's even part of this DAO, I'm not sure if she's here or not, uh, Alicia, she came into the Web3 space a few uh, months ago, maybe six months. She decided to just start a podcast. She started inviting people on, and now she has so many offers coming in from like huge Web3 companies like Ave, and uh, you know, um, she ended up going with ENS. But, um, but I think like you have to take a not, an unorthodox approach, and we need to teach what that approach looks like for people that might not know it. I think we could open the door for so much people, so many people to kind of have huge opportunities. And this is just another great opportunity. But again, we're, we're talking about so many things at this point. Um, again, we don't want to get sidetracked, I guess, uh, with um, too many things. So just another thing to keep in consideration. But I do appreciate the uh, questions and comments. And Tia Linda, it's good to see you in here. And I've seen you around uh, a lot. So it's good to talk to you. Um, I think this might be the first time we've ever talked. So. Yeah, yeah, it probably is. Um, yeah, so, I mean, my my uh, immediate comments were just exactly what Joff uh, brought up earlier, the need for us to have, like, different roles for persons joining, because I do know it could be a bit overwhelming for persons joining on the very first time, and especially if you're absolutely new in your uh, Web3 journey. 
So I think that's something that would have been raised. And I don't want to take up any more time talking about stuff that I'm sure uh, the very able Mr. Kempster is going to um, thrash out inside of his community guild. Um, and I just want to say big thanks to everybody who's been working on this, who's created the space. And um, first person I want to nominate for full-time role is Kempster. So, yeah. I am not worthy to Lendo, mate. Thank you. It's nice to have you back as well. I'm glad the um, yeah, yeah. the smart contract bootcamp went, went well. We'll have to have that catch yeah. up, mate, that you mentioned. Uh, maybe maybe next week sometime if you're up for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the thing. Do need to do that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, a lot a lot of the questions that people are answer, asking are really important. Um, and season zero is basically about answering these kind of questions, right? Like we cannot answer them all now, it's not possible, but it's really great to get them in um, because these are exactly the kind of things that we need to be thinking about, uh, about how we how we address and how we improve. Um, so... Yeah, but I think a lot of people can't hear you. What's going on? Super Do you want to try what Mater did and, and yeah, leave yeah, and yeah. come back? Hopefully it doesn't close up. Is that better? Where's the voice? Can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So uh, I was thanking Tia Lendo and then also saying that um, a lot of the questions that are being asked, the sp specific purpose of season zero and laying the foundations is where we're going to address those things. It's great to have these kind of questions coming in because that's what's going to inform how we can improve during season zero in terms of kind of like giving people a like a, a clearer path towards contributing in ways where what, what they want to and what they care about. Like as we deploy those initial guilds, we will um, update the onboarding to kind of push people towards things that they're interested to. And it is not going to be perfect straight away and it's going to take a little bit of time and there will be some frustrations, I'm sure. But um, yeah, these questions are great. They're really important. Um, and the, the purpose of season zero and hopefully it goes through is so we can start tackling these big and small questions um, that everyone has um, uh, over the next kind of two, two to three months. So we probably don't want to run on for too much longer. So we've got three, we've got three people up now. Um, I'll, I'll jump you all on really quick. It's uh, Ahmad, Isaiah and Ryan. Um, so Ahmad, if you want to go first and try and keep it quick if you can, because we're kind of, we're, we're coming up on two hours, but um, welcome to the stage, man. All right. Thanks. Nice to be here. Um, I just wanted to bring up one thing is um, I think we need a better one liner pitch on what the DAO does, because if you look at the website and the Twitter, it doesn't really explain it to people that are coming there for the first time. I mean, on the Twitter, like it says something like, um, I don't know, build Web3 with friends. And that doesn't really explain what we do. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's just something that I wanted to flag uh, that um, we should fix. Yeah. Super important point. Um, I think Nader mentioned that the website at the moment certainly is very geared at trying to onboard people in. You probably have already heard about us, um, but we, we really need to improve that as well. We probably need to do like a whole branding exercise, I think. Um, so I think that's currently suggested to be with the Design Guild in season zero. But man, if you want to get involved in that, if you've got ideas or, or you just want to come and get involved in that conversation, then yeah. We definitely need to, to look into that uh, look into that too as well. There's been a few things thrown about that we've not actually agreed as a community or focused as a community on addressing that because stuff just happened so fast. But yeah, I think that's a really important point that we can get right and then translate across everywhere where we kind of like own any real estate on the internet like Twitter and the website. Um, uh, Isaiah, did you have a question? Welcome up. Hey, um, so I mean... Yeah, I guess my question was kind of addressed um, earlier. So, um, and just now, you know, with the last person I spoke. So, yeah, I think, you know, once you guys kind of put out those, I guess, uh, you know, I guess post or share the information in regards to like how people can contribute and help more with the onboarding. Um, yeah, definitely. To, you know, also, I guess to build off what Stephanie was saying, you know, I would love to help contribute to that piece as well. Like, you know, just trying to, um, you know, I guess I've been very blessed as a person of color to you know have access to things that i know others from my community haven't so i want to definitely try to contribute whatever i can to help making that onboarding process smoother um for those who are coming into the space who are new or experienced or just you know 
um, yeah, just offering my services there as well, because I think I spoke to some of you guys in the forum about the marketing piece, but I think, you know, onboarding is a big piece as well, and so I want to contribute there as much as I can. So um, I guess, yeah, whoever I need to speak with with that, we'd love to chat with them offline. Yep. Yeah, amazing. Like, I think the onboarding side will, will definitely sit within the community guild, so as soon as that gets rolled out, um, like, head there. Um, there is a, there yeah, is it a sounds week- like two big messages I'm hearing uh, consistently, especially not just from this town hall, but maybe even in the last week or two, it's kind of like, what do we do? Like, what, what is our, you know, we have this mission statement, but we need to be a lot more crisp and clear and, and straightforward about that. And then we, we have so much really, you know, going on at this point, like we're working towards a comprehensive onboarding flow, but I wonder if just uh, in the next week or something, we could just put uh, a spreadsheet together, or even just a document or use an existing um, place that we have somewhere and just kind of have five or ten like links that kind of um get people up and running uh, or something and just be able to point people there a little bit uh more efficiently yeah so nathan has been kind of working on that on the notion doc so this is okay. yeah it, it exists and it's being refined um if people want to help right now actually uh, uh you can go to the channel uh called dow uh if i can type it in dow wiki and there is the beginnings. Nathan's done a, a good job, I think, in laying the foundations of that wiki, which is hopefully going to be kind of like that on-ramp into the community. Um, certainly whilst we figure out kind of the bigger problems around onboarding, but that will be like folded into the community guild. Um, and so if you're interested in that kind of side of things, like that's, that's where to go when it gets rolled out, um, which should hopefully be the end of next week when the season zero proposal passes but um i feel the frustration as much as everyone else in terms of it like the happy path towards contributing how you want to be maybe not well definitely not being super clear at the moment um one of the challenges of being a, a DAO is you decentralize decision making so um whilst this is a this is a great thing it then makes making big changes to how things are organized a different challenge from just one person figuring it out and then implementing it. So, um, yeah, but we, we need the input and we need the support once um, season zero passes to get people into those areas and really inform how we can make it better. Um, I think for now, uh, if you want to contribute with onboarding, the DAO wiki, probably number one. I'm sure Nathan would welcome uh, more support and help. Um, and then... Just generally, the onboarding document in there gives some initial steps and some guidance, um, and hopefully we can improve that over time. I guess, um, but hopefully that's well, that is what season zero is about. So hopefully we can we can make some big changes in that space over the next kind of weeks, weeks and months. Oh, uh, Ryan, are you still with us? Yeah, welcome. Um. Yeah, hey, I'll say this real quick since I know we're over time, but uh, regarding like the onboarding, contributing uh, sort of path and like shortening that loop, um, I wrote a comment about this in Discourse, but I was thinking maybe we could use uh, levers like Discord roles. So no, somebody joins the Discord, they don't need to necessarily catch up on what's going on. But as projects spin up async, like as- asynchronously, the project champion can sort of like tag anybody that's interested in x technology so like people's tags would be like i have a skill set like i'm good at react but i'm not great at solidity i'm interested in learning it and maybe we could leverage those as ways to just like raise a hand saying hey are you interested in learning more about this or are you good at it and get people into like at least a project channel with a smaller group uh, more quickly Yeah, I think that's exactly something like that is exactly where we need to get to. Um, there's a very rudimentary implementation of um, roles at the moment. Um, I can't remember who who we were talking about it with earlier. Maybe Stephanie, where you can uh, assign yourself as a front end or a Python or a Solidity or a designer or uh, a few other things. It's not a particularly exhaustive list, but making better use of roles like that is something that I think we absolutely need to do. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's a really good point. Yeah, just like a, especially as onboarding is being built out, it might be like just a, even if we don't go with it long term, could be just like a stepping stone for now. And I've seen some discords where like you use like a emoji to assign yourself roles, so we could set something up like that. 
it'd be part of the onboarding flow when you join the Discord server. And then boom, like when people spin up projects, you can a, like get a notification and jump in if you want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've been thinking similar things. Like someone spins up a project, they need a front end, they at the front end role um, and kind of off you go. Um, that's going to be yeah, an interesting challenge for us to figure out. Um, I think it will definitely involve role assignment and bots in some way. It's just exactly how we choose to implement it. Uh, and that's what, if there's anyone in the community that's either got experience, lots of experience or any experience setting up discords or in this kind of way, or has seen uh, other implementations of solving these kind of problems that they thought worked really, really well, then yeah, anyone and everyone who wants to contribute to that, particularly people that have seen it done well or, or done it well themselves elsewhere, then yeah we'll need that input kind of fed in so we can try and make sure that um, where we get to um, solve these problems that we've been, we've been discussing tonight. Cool. All right. So that was a bumper town hall. We're just coming up to the two hour mark. So yeah, for me, I want to say thank you to, to everyone for being here and thank you to everyone who's joined and everyone who's been engaging in the community so far. I think it's pretty ridiculous kind of, where we've got to in such a short period of time. And it's also like really, really nice to see the kind of in uh, support and engagement that's happened in the server from learning uh, from all sorts. If anyone ever has any questions, like try and share them publicly, but if there's something that you're maybe not sure, like you can always DM me, it's fine. I'm sure that's the same for a lot of other people. But yeah, it's all, hopefully gonna be really, really exciting few months as we kick off season zero uh, but yeah thanks for everyone's contributions so far and uh yeah we're gonna make it i think yeah definitely the most exciting week that i've personally had in a while just seeing all this stuff going on and um it's it's really fun to be a part of all this and excited to see what happens if this is what we've done in two months i wonder what's going to happen in the next four months so let's see what happens and yeah that's it we're gonna make it Whoop. All right, cool. Uh, thanks, everyone. Have a Later, crack everybody. cracking weekend, and uh, we'll see you in the summer awesome. soon. Thanks, y'all. See you guys.